Hi everyone. Today I'm going to talk about how Chime achieves high quality mobile releases at scale. I'm Arthur and I'm a software engineer at Chime. Over the last year, I've been super focused on our mobile platform, especially around mobile developer workflows and release process. Now, for those of you who don't know about Chime, Chime is a US-based financial technology company. With Chime, members get early access to their paychecks, accounts with no monthly fees, fee-free overdrafts, and so on. Our members depend on our app to access these financial services every day. Now, Chime has grown tremendously over the last few years. In fact, in the last two years, Chime was the top most downloaded banking app within the US. And our member base was not the only thing that grew quickly. We also increased the scale of our engineering team drastically. And we actually increased the number of mobile developers by 5x. In this time, our mobile repo also grew in size from a couple hundred files in 2018 to thousands of files. We now have more and more commits into our code base, as well as more frequent releases than we used to. And during this whole time, we were able to maintain a high level of app quality. In fact, we have a 4.8 star average rating across the two stores, and our crash rates are as low as 0.02%. Both figures we're really proud of. So how did we achieve such a high level of quality while growing so quickly? To talk more about that, I wanted to rewind a few years back to when we introduced the release train. So the release train is somewhat common within the industry, but the idea is that you have regular releases at a certain schedule. And this actually represented a, a pretty big change within the organization. Previously, releases were somewhat ad hoc. They could be unpredictable and they were really time consuming to, to create. The main reason was that releases required looking through all the changes that were included and having our QA teams test and validate each of those changes. With the introduction of the release train, we were able to introduce scalability as well as predictability into the process. With regularly scheduled releases with published dates, our developers, product teams, and cross-functional partners could rely on those scheduled dates to plan their launches and announcements and so forth. Secondly, in terms of scalability, we could in theory scale the release process up to hundreds or even thousands of changes per release because instead of individually testing every single change, we now only run a centralized suite of regression tests aimed for the most critical features only. Developers were now on the hook for testing their own, own changes before they merge them into the main branch. Now, even though the release train was super important to introduce, it wasn't quite enough to get us to the scale that we were at. The release train started feeling a lot like a bottleneck. It started feeling a little bit like a steam train. It was great for when it was introduced, but it started feeling a little slow, unreliable. And for those operating the release, it felt a lot like this. The inside of an, a steam train cab where there were tons of manual levers and knobs and gauges to monitor, it was not really sustainable for the release team to continue running such a heavyweight manual process. What we really needed was modern releases, a modern train with better safety against bugs and regressions, higher speeds, not necessarily more frequent releases, but faster releases, speed speed up the release process. And we also wanted it to be easier to operate. We wanted it to kind of be like operating this train instead of this train. 
And to do this, we invested in three key areas over the last couple of years to really level up and modernize our release process. The first is end-to-end -end testing. Second, dog fooding. And third, automation. Let's dive into that first section, end-to-end -end testing. End-to-end -end testing refers to tests that actually open up our app and tap through user flows. We did already have a set of end-to-end -end tests, but there were some serious issues. First of all, they were super slow. On average, it took about one hour for these tests to run. And sometimes to run the full suite, it would take more than two hours. The second issue was around flakiness. These tests were flaky. They were constantly failing and developers didn't really understand why they were fl uh, fa flaking and, and failing. And there was just like, uh, some distrust in the system once there are so many false negatives. These first two issues really caused a lack of engagement within our testing framework. For example, if you were a developer working on that code base, you probably wouldn't want to introduce a new set of tests and slow down everyone else. They already had to wait an hour. So one of the first things we did was to fix that problem. We made the tests run five times faster. We set ourselves an aggressive goal of cutting test runtime down to 10 to 15 minutes. And we got there. I wrote a blog post about the nitty gritty details about how we got there, but it really came down to doing a lot of caching and parallelizing the test runs. Second of all, we really d dug deep into addressing the flakiness in the test suite. It turns out there wasn't a silver bullet to address all flakiness and that the flakiness really originated from a number of different issues. We found issues from just tests and UI that were flaky to also our mock libraries that were returning random Boolean responses to issues that we found within Detox that we then fixed and, and contributed upstream back to open source. Now, all these things combined made the tests run a lot smoother and a lot more reliably. But there was one more step. We wanted to improve our documentation and bring training to the rest of our mobile developers so that they knew about all these improvements we were making and that they became familiar with how to write new tests or how to maintain the current set of tests. And as a result, developers wrote more tests. If you look on this chart on the right, this is the number of commits to our folder that included all of our end-to-end -end tests. And as you can see, around the time we started making these improvements, there was a drastic increase in activity within this folder. We actually saw developers actively contribute to the end-to-end -end test uh, suite. And the best thing of all is that even though we increased the number of tests and increased improved our coverage, the runtime was still within the 10 to 15 minute mark because of parallelization. And lastly, we also added retries to our end-to-end -end tests to really smooth out any remaining flakiness that is sometimes inevitable in an end-to-end -end testing framework. To, and, and when we do that, we might lose visibility into which tests might be flaky or failing because of the retries. To counter that, we also implemented automatic flakiness tracking and reporting so that our teams can continue to monitor which tests are flaky and get those fixed without blocking other developers. The second section is around dog fooding. Dog fooding refers to having your employees use your own product or app. While we did have dog fooding, a lot of our employees were in fact Chime members as well. We didn't have a mobile app dog fooding program. This meant that our employees were actually downloading the app from the app store just like our members. 
this isn't a huge issue in a smaller company, let's say like 50 to 100 people. But as you scale up to hundreds or even thousands of employees, you're leaving a big opportunity on the table. Employees are our best testers. They care deeply about the app, they use the app often, and they know the product well. We address this by starting a mobile app dog feeding program. We distrib distributed beta builds to our employees immediately after the release cut. This is the earliest time we are able to uh, share this build and this gives us the maximum amount of time for employees to test the new app build. Within those one to two weeks, um, while our QA teams are running the normal set of regression tests, our employees are also testing this latest build, making sure that there are no issues or bugs and, and things that might not be picked up with, with the regular regression testing. Our employees, just like our members, have a variety of different devices, different uh, user states. They might access different parts of the app and they might use the app in ways that we can't predict, things that we can't really encode in a set of tests. We also added a bug reporter into our app for employees to make it super easy to report these issues. And these bugs get automatically put into our issue triaging system. And because it does take a few steps to switch away from the App Store version and into the test flight version, for example, uh, we did have to measure, grow, and socialize this dog feeding program so that our employees would adopt this so that we can get as many testers as we could. Our dog feeding program has had enormous impact even though it's only been around for less than a year. We've already received hundreds of lower priority bugs that are super valuable feedback for our product teams. But we also got multiple release blocking bugs. These are bugs that were found during that one to two week period, right before we were about to roll out to members. These were bugs that were caused by code changes in that actual app release. And these were bugs that we previously might not even have caught and, and might have been caught by members. And, and lastly, even without a bug report, we see that there are thousands of sessions within a, a beta build before we start rolling out. This kind of helps us get confidence about the stability of the app, whether there are crashes or not. And the last area I wanted to talk about today is automation. Mm -hmm. Our release process was driven mainly by a group of volunteer developers. We called them release conductors. These release conductors were responsible for everything to do with releasing the app. And previously, this involved a ton of manual processes. They had to do get operations to cut release branches, kick off builds manually, make announcements on Slack, and so forth. These were somewhat error prone and time consuming. It was a lot like the picture of the train cab that, that we showed earlier within the steam train. So how did we level up from this? We used automation. We used scheduled CI jobs to basically automate as much as possible um, to get rid of as many of those manual tasks as possible. We now have CI jobs and scripts to bump versions, cut release branches, kick off builds, and even post announcements on Slack. This kind of allowed our human release conductors to focus on what they do best, which is problem solving, investigating bugs and regressions that might've been found during that period, um, and also evaluating requests for you know, rushing changes into, into the release. Sometimes those happen. And as a result, we were able to take this 12 step, 30 minute tedious release cut process and bring it all the way down to a zero step process. 
this release cut now happens automatically in the background and it happens in a predictable way. We used to get late cuts where maybe a release conductor was busy or they had meetings and they weren't able to, to basically cut the release or they cut the release but didn't have time to trigger the builds and, and the builds were, were kind of late. This never happens anymore. And most important of all, our volunteer release conductors are happy. They're able to focus on the things that they care about and they're volunteers. So we really want to make sure that they're, um, that they're, they're happy to, to be helping out with the release. So if we look at the things that we set off to do, we were able to check all these boxes. We got better safety from the improved end-to-end -end testing with faster speeds and higher coverage. We're able to achieve a faster release because of more automation coverage, as well as the automations that we put in place. And last of all, the releases were definitely easier to operate. Gone were the 12 step manuals to, to kind of run through and um, the release cuts were run not even with a click of a button. It happens automatically in the background. Chime's mission is to help everyday people achieve financial peace of mind together. We invested in all of these initiatives so that our product teams can stay focused on this mission so that they don't have to worry about whether the release is late or whether their tests are flaking out. They can focus on our mission. Thank you, and I'll have time for some questions.